Hi, I'm Rob Cosgrove, CEO of Remote Backup Systems. Thanks for taking the time to learn about our R Backup brandable white-labeled online backup platform. Thousands of VARs, MSPs, ISPs, and other computer professionals in 64 countries have used our software to provide online backup services since 1987. You control our software using the Web Manager. That's the web interface that provides access to your client accounts, branding, customization, e-commerce features, server control, and more. Here's the Web Manager login. We'll enter the username admin and the password password. They're case sensitive. These screens can be customized and branded by editing their HTML files. You can return here by pointing a browser to a localhost slash web. Select the My Accounts tab to log in. The opening screen of the Web Manager is its dashboard. This contains three charts that show the overall status of your online backup service. This is a good page to check first thing in the morning to see how your backups went overnight. The first chart shows your license usage. The second chart shows traffic through your server over the past 24 hours, or weekly or monthly. The third chart is the most important. This one shows the status of all of your backup accounts over the past 24 hours, and it can also be expanded to show three days and seven days. You can click on each blue bar to show the detail associated with it. The pop-up report shows which users are included in each category, so you can take action to correct any failures or missed backups. You can also receive emails notifying you of backup status. We'll cover that feature when we discuss email notifications. Clicking Manage Users brings up a list of users. Here we have only one, the built-in demo account. This display shows that the username is demo and it's assigned to the house account group. It has a 50 megabyte quota and the account is active. You can edit the user's account here, delete the account here, you can get individual usage reports, and you can remotely manage this user. Manage account groups here. The monitor screen is a real-time monitor of the activity of your RBS server. This one is currently showing no activity. When backups start running, you'll see them on this screen. It shows one line per logged in user containing the username, version number, and a real-time display of the number of files and file sizes as they're backed up. There's also a progress bar for each. Here you can view the various logs that are available. And these are the reports. The most important report is the Disk Resources Report. Most of our partners use this for billing. This shows each account with the total number of files they have in storage, the total pre-compression and post-compression file sizes, the quota, the percentage used of the quota, and the last backup date. There are also buttons here to edit, delete, and view statistics for each account. As with all the reports, this one can be printed or exported to Excel. A note about file sizes. Most of our partners bill their users by native file size. That's the size of the files before compression as they exist on the user's computers. They do it like this to prevent confusion. End users might know how big their files are, but they will not know how compression affects them. We find that billing customers by compressed file size, which is often smaller, sometimes makes them think all their files are not being backed up. So wherever our software shows users file sizes, it shows them native sizes, and you can change this to show compressed sizes if you want. Let's make sure our server is set up correctly. For this demo, I'll show you the most interesting and useful features and bypass most of those that are not used very often. On the property screen, you can set the default command port for your RBS server. Our assigned port number is 2774, and it's usually safe to use this port, although some partners switch this to a more common port, like 443 or 880, as long as this doesn't conflict with any other service. Change the service provider's name here. That's your company name as you want it to show up on some of the reports and menus and on the end user license agreement. Change the administrator's email address. If you want your software to automatically code sign your client installers, enter your code sign command. This requires a class three code signing certificate, which does not come with the software. Change the admin username and password. And if you want to code sign your installers and have the code signing certificate installed, select this checkbox. If you're using the e-commerce plugin, we recommend you install an SSL certificate purchased separately. You can turn on server monitoring, which can send you status reports by email. 
Here are some other settings that can allow users to upgrade and downgrade plans, view compressed file sizes, change their default language, and more. The RBS server can send notifications by email triggered by different events like successful backups, missed backups, and more. Emails can be sent through your own mail server or through ours on the partner's portal. This is where you configure email notifications. Emails can be sent on successful backups, failed backups, missed backups, over quota accounts, when new users sign up online, when they change their storage plans, cancel their accounts, buy more storage, and sign up for a trial account. An email can be sent when a scheduled recurring credit card payment fails. Emails can be sent to the user's email address, the account group's email address, or you can enter any other email address. They can be sent from any address you like, and they can be CC'd and BCC'd. Many of our partners put the email address of their RMM software in the BCC field for failed and missed backups. This will automatically generate a trouble ticket for follow-up by a technician. Successful emails are usually sent only to end users or group managers. The subject field usually contains information specific to the account and the backup status like your backup completed successfully. And you can also include any of seven macros that merge data from the accounts. You can include first and last name, username, email, account group, company, and trial account. Some partners use these macros to trigger account specific rules in their RMM software. You can optionally attach backup logs to the emails. These are attached as zip files. All email notifications are template driven and you can edit them here. The emails are HTML, so they can contain colors and graphics, links, and many other HTML features. You can make them look really nice. Like the email subjects, they can also include macros, 52 of them. The body macros include data like backup status, date, time, backup set name, user's address, and contact info, subscription plan, quota, just about anything the system knows about each user. Body macros are enclosed in hash marks. Email notifications can be highly customized and branded. You can get a full list of all macros in the documentation for the web manager here. Here you can view the email notification log. And here you can broadcast emails to all your users. Now I'll show you how to build your own client installer. We'll use this tool to set all of the branding for your client installers and to set their defaults. Our backup is very flexible. Using this tool, you can fill in the blanks to set up how you want your installers to look, which features they should have, and nearly 400 other characteristics. Then, when you have it all set up the way you like, you just press a button, and this tool will build all of your customizations, defaults, and branding into a single EXE file that can be installed on your end user's computers. The web manager even provides an HTTP download link for your installers. Here you can add your own company name or product name that shows up in the captions of your software. Let's change this one to Rob's Backup Service. You can change much of the text that's displayed during installation and operation. You can change all the icons and graphics to your own. There's even an automatic graphics conversion utility on the partners portal. You can upload any graphic, any format, and it'll convert to the exact formats and sizes our backup needs here. While you're evaluating our backup, you have an account on the Partners Portal. You can access it at portal.remote-backup.com. You can add your own menus to the software. You can set internal features like log level and transfer verification. You can automatically exclude unnecessary files like temporary files and system files. Advanced internal settings let you fine-tune things like memory usage, CPU optimization, and throttling. You can turn on stealth mode to generate a client that's completely invisible, displaying no screens at all. And the client can write to the Windows event logs for monitoring with your RMM solution. Click this setting to enable automatic client updates. This makes your client software automatically update itself from your server when a software update is published. 
Change the publisher and software owner and the Add Remove Programs data. Include your own user license file and many other settings. If you like, you can associate client installers with plans. We'll get to plans in a bit. Type your RBS server's URL here. Most partners use our server locator service, which provides dynamic DNS for your server. If you check mark here, our server locator will track your RBS server's IP address as it changes, allowing your end users to find your server wherever it is. If you manage your own DNS, enter a subdomain for your RBS server here. For this demo, I'm going to use the internal IP address of this server, so later I can show you how this client runs by installing it on the local server. You can select from seven types of encryption, from legacy DES to the current U.S. military standard AES-256. And if you want more security, you can select Blowfish for 448-bit security. Client locks let you turn off certain features of the client software. Features selected here will not be available in this version of your client software. And I should note here that you can make as many versions of the client software as you want, each with different branding, features, and defaults. Our backup is driven by backup sets. Backup sets are like individual programs, each of which tells the software which files to backup, how long to keep copies, how many copies to keep, when to retire them, how often to back them up, and what kind of backup to perform, and more. Each client installation can run as many backup sets as you like. Typically, small business computers use two or three backup sets. The first backup set might back up Microsoft Office files from wherever they're found on the drive system, keep all revisions for 30 days, and do one backup per day. The second backup set might select only email data backed up once a week and retained for seven years. The third backup might perform a full image backup of the system once a week and keep two revisions. Our backup has built-in agents for Exchange database level, Exchange brick and mailbox level, VMware clients, Active Directory, System State, SharePoint, SQL Server, and most other Microsoft databases and applications. We add new agents often, so check with the current documentation to see what we currently support. The agents can back up and restore active and in-use systems. There's never any need to shut down a service to back it up. The applications that we do not have a built-in agent for are backed up by invoking Windows VSS. All backups can be done on live systems without shutting anything down. We even back up files that are in use and locked by other applications. I'll set up this backup set called Default to do incremental backups of full files. It will send backups to the RBS server and to a local device like a USB drive inside the local network. Let's also set it up to send backups to a cloud service like Google Drive or Dropbox. So this backup will go to three locations all at the same time. The RBS server, a location inside the local network, and somewhere in the public cloud. Let's do this backup Monday through Friday starting at 8 p.m. local time and attempting for eight hours. If the backup is still running after eight hours, we'll have it stop and resume with the next session on the next night. You can turn on Auto Select to have the software automatically pick files by file type and application wherever they are on the drive system. This feature is in use by partners who bundle our backup with vertical market applications as a built-in online backup feature. It's useful when you don't know where your users might save files, but you do know which applications generate them or what their file types are. This is where you set your file retention policies. This backup set will keep all versions of the files it backs up for 90 days. After 90 days, it'll start to delete files one at a time, once a day, starting with the oldest. I've set Keep Latest Version on, so if someone stops editing this file, and during purging we get right down to the very last file, the software will keep the most current version, even if it's older than the file retention period. We can also set the software to keep the most current versions of a file, regardless of date. In this case, I've set it to retain the most current three versions. These will be purged off as soon as newer versions appear. 
always keeping the most current three. If you're going to give your end users access to the file selection screens, you can add some files and folders to this global exclusion list. Files and folders you add here will not show up on the file selection interface, so they can't be selected for backup. We find that if you allow end users to select their own files for backup, they often select far more than they should, like the entire hard drive, and then they wonder why their backups take so long and why their bill is so high. Files you might want to exclude are the recycle bin, temporary internet files, backup files, and my videos. Okay, so we've just set up our first backup set named Default. If you want to set up more backup sets to include in your client installers, select New Set and do this again. Remember, after installation you can edit any of this. Just because we define a backup set here doesn't mean that we have to include it in the client software. Everything we're doing on these client customization pages just sets the client defaults and any of it can be changed later. Here's the last page. Like backup sets, the settings on this page can be associated with plans, which I'll show you next. These are advanced settings that rarely need to be changed. The most interesting feature on this page is at the bottom, the batch files. Our backup can run Windows command files before and after each backup set. You can include any batch commands here. Partners use this to do things like call an outboard encryption engine or send an email notification. Some use the post batch command to trigger another backup, perhaps a tape backup. These batch files can do anything that you can program with DOS batch files or Windows command files. Okay, we finished with all the branding and customization. Now let's build the installer. Enter a name for this installer. And remember, you can make as many as you want. Just give them different names. And I've pre-customized a new icon. I'll use that. And we'll build a server edition. The client installer is now being built. After it is finished, we'll download it by clicking here. Now, let's install this client on the same computer as the RBS server so you can see it in action. I'll copy the .exe file that we just built onto the desktop. And here it is on the desktop with our customized icon. Now let's run it to install the client software. Okay, that's it. It's installed. Here it is on the desktop and the computer wants to reboot. Some do, some don't. I'll reboot this one and come back to show you the rest. After the computer rebooted, the client software started. At this point, it wants to know which account to connect to. I'll select New Registration. Disaster Recovery is for when you want to automatically restore a full backup to a new computer. The software can create and maintain a key file that contains all the login information and encryption keys that would be needed to restore this user account on another computer or to restore files to another computer from this account. Many partners who take complete responsibility for their end users save these key files for their clients. If you want to create one, answer yes here. You can place this on a memory stick or save it to the hard drive. I won't create one for this demo, but the software is smart and it wants to make sure I have a copy of this super critical information and now it's offering to print it all for me. I'm going to be stupid and decline. Here I can edit the default backup set that we created. There are two ways to select files for backup in the R Backup Client software. On the left side of the screen, I can select files by application or by file group. This will automatically select files from wherever they are on the drive without the need to specifically select files and folders. Or I can select files and folders from the right side. I already have a folder on this drive that I'll use for this demo. Here it is. I'll select it on the right side here by clicking this green check mark. 
or I could right click and select include. Uh, for this demo, I'll change the backup type to full and the schedule to on demand. And that's it. The software is installed and set up and it's ready to do backups. Now let's do a backup. Our backup is now scanning the files I selected for backup to pick the ones that need to be backed up. It'll select all of them because I set it to full. Now it's compressing and encrypting files, testing them for integrity, and digitally signing them. It sends them to the server, which validates the digital signature. This ensures that the files haven't been changed since the client signed them, and no viruses have attached, and that they've actually come from the authorized client software. When the server validates that all files are exact copies of the original, the client finishes. Now, let's do a restore. I'll delete all the local files. The Restore interface is powerful, and there are four versions of it for four different uses. This version is in the client software. There's an online version that you can post on your website. It's a small EXE file that installs itself, does a restore, and then uninstalls. Another version can be shipped back to the clients along with their compressed encrypted backup files on a USB drive for those huge restores that would take too long online. They can just plug in the drive, run this program, and it'll restore from the drive. And the fourth version is built into the server software and it can restore files at the server as long as you have the key file. Our backup can do synthetic full restores. It can synthesize a full restore from a series of incremental and full backups. You can search for files to restore by all or part of the file name or folder name and by the backup set, by date, and by location. Our backup is hybrid backup software so it can backup and restore to multiple locations simultaneously your RBS server, a local device, and to a public cloud location like Google Drive. To activate the synthetic full restore, I'll check mark this box. Here are the latest files that we backed up. To restore them, I'll just select them and then click Start Restore. I can restore them to an alternate location, but I'll just put them back where they came from. And here they come back. The system is doing a backup in reverse. It tests the digital signatures, validates checksums and hashes, decrypts and decompresses the files, and puts them all back where they came from. We've just backed up and restored 100 normal files. The process is the same for Exchange, Active Directory, SQL, and anything else we have an agent for. In the case of Exchange, the screen would have displayed a list of Exchange servers, and I could expand each one of these to see the mailboxes and then I could select which mailboxes to restore. Exchange is restored in an additive way. It restores individual emails that are no longer in the source location, but it won't overwrite existing emails and it won't duplicate them. Back to the web manager, here's the backup we just did. It sent 105 files with a compressed size of 1.5 megabytes and a native size of 1.9. This is the plans section. Some partners don't use this section, but I'll show it to you anyway. Here you can associate an installer with a set of rules that defines a backup plan. You may want to create a plan called Small Business that has a quota of 20 gigabytes, runs nightly, backs up six computers, saves data for two years, and costs $79 per month. You can create another called Personal Plan that backs up personal computers only and saves data for 30 days with a 10 gigabyte quota. You can create as many plans as you like, and they can all be listed on a web page that the public can go to to order it. This is part of the e-commerce plugin. Here's what it looks like to the public. Here's the Buy Now page. Each of these plans has been defined in the Web Manager and shows up here. To buy one of these plans, just click the Buy Now button. You get a checkout screen that asks you to select a username and password and other information. It lets you pay by credit card or PayPal. Click I accept to the software license agreement. I'm not going to click it here because I haven't entered any credit card info, but here's what happens. 
When you click I accept, the system bills the credit card for the first month's payment and then sets it up for recurring payments on the schedule associated with the selected plan. It then creates a backup account for on your RBS server. It emails the new client a welcome email and sends the administrator an email notifying him that he has a new user. It updates the orders screen where you can see all of your orders as they come in. And then it creates an installer with all the rules and defaults associated with the plan. It downloads it for the client to install. All this happens in just a few seconds. That's all part of the e-commerce plug-in and not all partners need it. Okay, back to plans. Plans can be trial or live. All of our software comes with free trial licenses. You get half as many free trial licenses as you buy live licenses. So if you buy 800 live licenses, you get 400 free trial licenses. At the end of the trial period, the RBS server sends an email thanking the user for trying the software and offering a way to purchase it. There's a built-in coupon management system. If you want to issue coupons good for discounts, this is the place to do it. When you define coupons, a special field on the order form is visible asking for a coupon code. Coupons have starting and ending dates, and you can preload them and send out special offers. When you have online orders, they show up on this page. And the Help menu has links to all the info we've discussed and more. You can get your hands on a real RBS server with the Web Manager and e-commerce system at rbs-software.com. Just go there and click to have a username and password emailed to you. You can drive it around and see what you think about it. The Web Manager also comes in a multi-tenant version in case you want to have resellers who resell your online backup service under their own brand. Resellers get their own portal and they can customize and brand their own client software and manage their own accounts. The basic Web Manager comes as part of all our backup packages. You can download your own evaluation version just like this one at our website, remote-backup.com. If you want, we'll even install it for you by remote and give you a training session and then hand you the keys for two weeks. You can customize and brand it. You can deploy live clients. If you like it, just buy it and we'll activate it for you. All your branding and customer accounts will remain and your software will simply go live. Thanks for watching. I'm Rob Cosgrove. You can email me at rob at remote-backup.com or phone 901-405-1234 or toll-free 800-519-7643.